Hello everyone and welcome to what I hope is a very quick on the road edition to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some security tips along the way. I'm your host and security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting January 14th, 2013. This week's update is going to focus on some updates to a lot of zero day that's come out for the past few weeks. Let's start with the IE zero day. At the end of the year, Microsoft warned of a brand new zero day that was affecting Internet Explorer 6 through 8. And early in the year, they released a fix it uh, mitigation workaround that helped protect you from uh, the exploit leveraging this vulnerability. During patch day, they weren't able to release a patch for this. However, during this week, they released what they call an out of cycle patch for IE 6 through 8. So if you use IE 6 through 8, there is a patch for that zero day vulnerability. You should definitely go get it. On top of that, last week in my video, I talked about another zero day vulnerability in Java, a very critical zero day vulnerability that a lot of attackers are using in their web attack framework. So it's spreading quite a bit online. During this week, Oracle did release a, a emergency patch for Java to fix this vulnerability, specifically Java Update 11. So if you use Java, you definitely want to go get that patch. It fixes two vulnerabilities, including the zero day one mentioned before, and it also resets the default security stance for Java to high, which means it's going to ask you every time you want to run Java content. So that is pretty good. That said, also this week, Brian Krebs released information about a, another attacker publicizing another zero-day vulnerability on one of the underground markets. He was basically trying to sell what he calls a new Java zero-day for around $5,000. Now, of course, no one knows for sure whether this is true. That said, underground markets usually are moderated and usually don't let people sell stuff unless they're able to verify. So there may be another Java zero-day out in the wild right now, which is a good reason to mention that if you don't use Java, if, if you don't need it, you should probably not install it on your computer. It is actually a very well-targeted app right now. While we're talking about Oracle's Java update, I should also mention they released another one of their critical patch updates. These are special consolidated updates that contain tons and tons of patches for many Oracle products, including their database server, MySQL, VirtualBox, uh, their, their Siemens software, PeopleSoft software, and many other products. So if you use any of Oracle's products, you should definitely check our WatchGuard Security Center post to find the link to this CPU update and go apply the necessary patches. So let me end by quickly highlighting two interesting newsworthy stories that came out this week. The first was news of a virus infiltrating a U.S. power plant. According to the Department of Homeland Security, a contractor uh, probably a few years back walked a virus into a U.S. power plant on a USB key and then plugged that key into one of the computers, thus infecting it. The infection then did spread within the power plant and actually caused them a few days of outage. So it's an interesting story showing how modern malware and attacks are also uh, affecting infrastructure and SCADA, which is usually air-gapped from the internet. That air gap is starting to disappear. So the moral of the story is you still need internet and network security for your SCADA in ICS facilities. Another news item I just want to glaze over is a new story about yet another Chinese mobile phone botnet. There's more stories about a botnet that's infected apparently millions of Chinese mobile phones. So it's another example of malware moving uh, to mobile devices. So if you haven't yet started to develop uh, a good mobile security policy or a BYOD policy, if you plan to let people bring personal devices into your network, you definitely should do so now. Well, that's it for this abbreviated on the road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review. I had to rush because I have other events to get to. However, if you want more details on any of these stories, you should definitely check out this video post at the WatchGuard Security Center blog, because in that post, I actually include references to many of the stories where you can read up and get more details. On top of that, I post regular security uh, updates all throughout the week. Also, if you want to keep abreast of latest watch, guard, and security news, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. 
As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.